Hello, dearest friends. Rabbi Fischel here, coming to you live from the beach at Moorings Park. I pray and hope you're doing well. What a joy and an honor it is to connect with you again this week. So today, I want to begin with a quote from Shakespeare from Twelfth Night. Be not afraid of greatness. Some are born great, some achieve greatness, and some have greatness thrusted upon them. And so today, I want to talk to you how great you are. Yes, the great Chabad Naples family, the great Facebook friends, I want to talk to you how great you are. And you may be thinking, Rabbi Fischl's just saying this to be nice, to make us feel good. And that is true. But hear me out till the end and let me know how you feel after this, uh, this thought. It inspired me and I hope it's inspiring as well. So in this week's Torah reading, we have where Abraham is sitting alone with Isaac on a mountain. He received a call to take his son and bring him up as an offering. That's for another discussion. And they're sitting on the mountain and suddenly Abraham hears this heavenly voice call out, Abraham, Abraham, Avraham, Avraham, do not stretch your hand out to the lad. And it was at that moment that Avraham passed his ultimate test. But the sages wonder and ask, did God have a stutter? Why did God call out, Abraham, Abraham? Was Abraham deaf? Why the double outcry of Abraham? And we know the Torah doesn't use flowery or poetic language just to get attention or for greater emphasis. Every single word in the Torah is relevant. There's no superfluous word. And this, my dear friends, is what I want to share with you today. That in fact, our sages tell us there are two Abrahams. You see, there's the image of Abraham that exists in heaven. What God had in mind when he created the soul of Abraham. And then there's mortal Abraham. As he lives and acts here on earth. And all too often, there's too much of a gap between those two images between those two versions of ourselves, what we're capable of accomplishing, the way God sees us, the greatness that is within us, and who and what we are in this world. That moment when God called out to Abraham, 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 he passed the ultimate test. The two Abrahams merged and became one. And although many of us are not likely to pull it off to perfection the way Abraham did, but it is our job every single moment of every single day to bring those two versions of ourselves as closely as possible to one another. And this is a call that God reaches out to us every day. Rabbi Fischl, Rabbi Fischl, or David, David, or Linda, Linda, whatever it may be, God says, hey, are you in sync with the image that I have of you here above? Are you living up to your calling? Let's not shrug it off. We can all have an impact on our family, on our community, our surroundings, and ultimately the world. And so let us look at ourselves the way God views us. Let us see others the way God sees them. And as Marion Williamson once said, it's such a powerful line. He said, our greatest fear is not that we're inadequate. Our greatest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It's our light, not our darkness, that frightens us. You know, we ask ourselves sometimes, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, fantastic, incredible? Actually, God is saying to Ab Abraham, who, who are you not to be? You're a child of God. That light shines within you. And as you allow your light to shine within you, you unconsciously give permission to the entire world around you to shine their light. But you acting small doesn't serve anyone. And so therefore the call to each and every one of us is Rabbi Fischl, Rabbi Fischl. Abraham, Abraham. I want, to see, I want you to see yourself the way I had you in mind when I created you. You're capable of accomplishing so much. And I want to conclude with this beautiful insight. When President-elect Zachary Taylor refused to be inaugurated on the scheduled date of March 4th, 1850, I believe it was, because it was Sunday and the Christian Sabbath, they had to move the inauguration to the next day, Monday, 
which would leave the nation without a president for 24 hours. Ay vey! Because his predecessor was leaving as scheduled on Sunday afternoon. And the rules of succession left Senator Acheson to be in line to be president for one day. Unfortunately, he was fond of food and drinking and he overdid things at the inauguration party on Saturday night and he instructed everyone not to wake him up, you know, Sunday in the morning and afternoon. And what ended up happening was that he woke up on Monday afternoon and he slept through his entire presidency. Isn't this the story of our lives sometimes? We sleep through our presidency. We're children of God. We sleep through incredible possibility. Instead of living lives of greatness, we settle for mediocrity. And I want to mention that talks also about the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah, which God wanted to destroy. And Abraham says, let me find just a few good people. And although it didn't end positively, there's a powerful message that Abram was saying, and God was saying, yes, if you find even just one good person, it will sway the outcome of that city. One good individual. The greatness that we have in, within us needs to be manifested. And that's what the Torah portion is all about, telling Abram, Abram, but it's a call to each and every one of us. And so when you wake up in the morning, remember what Rabbi Fischl said, the heavenly Rabbi Fischl, <laughs> not the earthly Rabbi Fischl. Whatever your name is, yes, I know all your names. Take the moment and to see yourself the way God sees you. And as Margaret Mead once said, never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it is the only thing that ever has. So my dear friends, look at this great world.